Buenos días, Daryl, and uh, thank you for joining us today at Business Spotlight Series. Today, I'm excited to introduce Daryl Harris, the founder of Kitchen Rub Co. It's a reno renovating homes on a budget without compromise since 2012 across the central belt of Scotland. Daryl, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> now, uh, Daryl, tell us how you ended up running a business doing what you do. I, I, I came from a place of, of boredom and underappreciation, I would definitely say, within the, <laughs> the work sector. Um, I was working for a company for a, about two years um, and you just, you get the overwhelming feeling of undervalued um, and limited and I just had enough and just yeah. thought, you know what, I, can, I think I can do better on my own. Um, make my own rules, be my own driving force and and that's what got me in here. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about, you know, owning your business. Yeah. So, you know, it is um, how how was the transition from being an employee working for somebody else to, wow, you know, running your business? I mean, I, I found it harder um, to be the employee, to be honest. Um, before, I had never really picked a career. I had never really gave everything my all career-wise. Um, I was an avid traveller. Uh, I enjoyed a night out. I enjoyed a good time with my friends. Um, so going for full-time employment and being consistent with that was a struggle at the time. Um, and being limited and caged, if you will, within a set of rules um, was, uh, was very limiting. So taking the transition into self-employment was, was an easy step. Um, uh, it just gave me room to, room to spread my wings. That's what it was. Yes. And then you mentioned earlier, so you set up the, 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 the business really in 2012, but then in 18, 2018, you went limited. Yes. That, yeah, it was a great, a great milestone um, going limited. Um, it came from a place of necessity, to be honest. It was, we did hit the tax threshold. Um, it was more optimal um, to go limited um, from an accounting point of view and a financial point of view. Uh, but it was a great, it was a great accolade to achieve. Yeah. Um, now a limited company we've made it, it was... yeah, definitely you know, it, it, many people remain is what they were saying before that some people think they own a business but they don't own a business they own a job that's it yeah, yeah and that that's uh, that, that's great so um it's great that you br broke that threshold um now what's uh what are your aspirations for the business say five years from now where would you like to take the business to yeah, I mean, I don't think it's unrealistic to say global. Um, I like I it. I like I it. I feel the visions, uh, the visions there um, for a worldwide kind of uh, service that we can provide. Um, even if it, we are not the guys actually physically providing it, um, the service has got legs all over the world as a renovation alternative. So global, definitely global. Yeah, well, I mean, I I, I love the, the 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 mantra you know that you said on your uh, is uh, renovating homes on a budget without compromise. Yeah. That's yeah. It's very compelling. Okay, that is the mission. It's definitely the mission, and it's the key selling point um, yes. for what we do. Uh, yes. It's very easily to translate that message yes. when somebody understands the process versus what's out there already. Yes. Particularly in the trades, in the construction industry, renovation, there are so many things going wrong and cowboys in the in the in the yes. industry. So uh, no, that, that that's great. Um, what's um, what is a, one of your biggest challenges that you've had in in building your business? Uh, I mean. I I wouldn't attribute it to one single problem. Uh, it's been a multitude of problems along the way, a, a, a lot of hurdles to overcome uh, along the way. I wouldn't definitely not say one thing in particular, but as a combination, um, it definitely takes its toll. It's, it's been a learning curve. I'd say the main one for every business, including ourselves on a daily, is staffing. Um, I mean, you get natural... Every, everything's flowing all the time. People's circumstances change, finances change, and you've constantly got that void to fill. Uh, so I definitely say finding the right the right people is is a challenge. Yeah, I know we we get that a lot across all industries. Is finding talent and uh, and keeping talent. Yes, that's, that, that, that's a common one. 
Um, okay, and um, what's your uh, your favorite book or podcast that uh, the way you learn? What's your favorite one? All of the news is that what you're <laughs> really? All of the news. Um, <laughs> I would say, I, I mean, the favorite book. I loved the Everything Store. Um, the Everything Store was great. It gave you an insight into thinking big, um, having a long term plan. Um, obviously the story of Bezos is very well known uh, but there's some there's some key components in there that I think are very easily overlooked um, and the scalability in the mind uh, having the vision a structured vision is, is definitely key in development and growth yeah brilliant I mean do you, do you see any so in terms of leadership um, are there takeaways in that book you know, to develop one's leadership because business owners need to, to be leaders. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not sure how I would categorize myself in that. I've definitely never been a good manager. Um, I've more got a vision that I need to see out and a, somewhat a perfectionist as well. Um, I've got high expectations, uh, but I'm super fair. I, I would like to believe in myself. I'm super fair and logical, which I think translates well to the team. Um, but I don't know at leadership. I seem to be doing all right, so I can't. I can't say I'm bad at it, but I definitely yes. there's room for improvement there. Yeah, I mean from from the book from Bess's book. Uh, was there any any tips there that you want one can learn from to delegation? To... <laughs> right? Delegation. Yes, yes, yes. Delegation and not abdication. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I, I read the, a letter of uh, Bezos to shareholders yeah. went public, uh, I don't know, in the, in the early 20 years ago or something. And his vision in that letter to shareholders was amazing. Yeah. Bearing in mind that company was losing money for two decades and, uh, and his vision was so powerful, people kept funding it, you know. Yeah. Um, self-belief. That's what it is, self-belief. Yes, 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 definitely. Now, um, what's the what's your favorite film? Film, but there's a film called Snatch. It's a Guy Ritchie film. Um, I must have watched the film a thousand times. Um, you could attribute it to the kind of gangster vibe, um, subtleties in conversation and negotiation, and it's it's a good watch. Um, and funny. You need it to be funny. It needs to be entertaining. Yes. Yes. Um, I've I've made an out of it because you know I'm always looking for you know good books, good uh, um, good movies to watch. So thank, yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, who is um uh, who your your hero? Who, who who do you look up to in life? Who has inspired you in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I attribute that definitely to my grandfather. Um, I mean, watching him through the years, obviously the age gap <laughs> was. I mean, it didn't help the situation and what I could have definitely took if we were closer in age uh, for his experiences. But I find myself looking back on how I feel confident enough to take on challenges. And I can take it for situations that I can remember, even though I didn't, I wasn't actually getting taught it. We weren't talking about it. But you know you picked it up because that's how you know how to move forward. So I can definitely attribute a lot of success and drive to him. That's brilliant. That, that's very, very good to have, you know, a, a, a hero so close to home, right? As opposed yeah. to, uh, yeah, um, that, that's excellent. Now, what's, um, what, would you, what would you have done differently if you had to start again? Knowing what you know today, yeah. if you backtrack, you know, 12 years to 2012, what would you have done differently? I, I don't think I'd have been as caught up on the the perfectionist aspect of every department. Um, there's definitely things that take priority and things that can't be compromised on. Um, but if you take that approach to every single task um, that needs carried out, you, you definitely roadblock yourself and you slow yourself down. I think the progression could have been a lot faster had I been more easy going with some stuff. Yeah. I love the mantra. Um, so... You don't aim for perfection, aim for progression. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah no, definitely. And um, what will you, what will you say to somebody who is thinking, shall I, you know, 
get my own business as you did years ago. You, you took yeah. the decision of going for, you know, taking the plunge and going and setting up your own business. What would you advise to somebody who is kind of thinking of, you know, sitting on the, sitting on the fence, you know, shall I, shall I not? I mean, it totally depends on people's individual circumstances. I find that people are too quick to go, do it, you should do it. It's, yeah, it's the best thing you'll ever try in your life. And there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, that is very positive messaging. Mm. However, it's very, it's not easy. Um, there is a lot of pitfalls along the way and it totally depends on somebody's circumstances. Mm. I would say do it. 100% but have a safety net if you're not in a position to, to go all out um, because if you've got dependents, you've got bills you've got, you know what I mean responsibilities, it is, it is not a surefire way of looking after your life Tell us, so, you know, the, the, the mantra um, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity cash yes. is reality yeah. um, What's your been your experience on the on the cash flow, you know, um, running a business, gro growing a business, growing growth sucks uh, cash, growing a business sucks cash, and everybody knows that. So, any piece of advice on on running a business profitably without loading yourself with debt and yeah. so on. I mean, I've, I've always been in the belief, um, again, another thing I contribute to my grandfather is if you can't pay for it, don't buy it. Yeah. It's as simple as that, especially in the beginning. Obviously, the dynamic changes when you when you hit a certain level, especially when you go limited, um, financing and, and support is essential for growth. Um, but I definitely wouldn't plunge myself into a, a bad situation right away and roll the dice. Um, I would have a security net. I would definitely have a wee safety net now. Brilliant. Um, just to wrap up, do you have any advice for your 18-year-old self? Yeah, do it quicker. <laughs> do it quicker. <laughs> but again, I can't I can't complain. Look at life experience comes in many forms. Um, it could be traveling, it could be people, um, it could be building something and being creative, but you need to find out what that is for yourself before you even start. That is, what do you value? Yes. You said do it quicker. How how old are you, if I may ask? Yeah, th 37. 37. So that's a great age. You've got, uh, I read the book years ago by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Right. It's a great read. And he says that uh, successful people most successful people achieve their greatest success in life in the bracket 40 to 60. Okay. So you, you are where you are today at 37. You haven't even started the, the successful, you know, a, a bracket in your life. So, you know, quick, quick, you know, you are, you are, you are doing, you're going, doing quite well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going well, but, um, I wouldn't say impatience, but definitely something. <laughs> something. Well, that, that, that tells you about, you know, the vision of a business, the goals of the business. And uh, do you do you set goals for the business or you just grow, you know, with the market? Yeah, I mean, we definitely adapt. Um, we've adapped a few times. And I mean, we've had a lot of, a, a lot of hurdles put our way that it was out with anybody's control. Yeah. But for instance, the cost of living crisis we're currently in. Uh, so you set realistic targets, but there always has to be a vision. There always has to be a mission and a set a belief and a passion. Um, that is, as long as everybody keeps that, it doesn't matter if we grow a percent next year. Correct, yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're going the right way. Brilliant. Finally, um, uh, Daryl, do you have any any news about the business you want to share with people watching it, or, or promotions that you have? Um, because you, 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 your your business, your target is is uh, is the residential market, right? It's a business to consumer. So, anything you want to share for people watching this? I mean, the, the, straight to the consumer, I would say it's a it's a no brainer. Um, coming to renovation, a hundred percent. Um, I mean, we are the next best thing to replacement. Um, and not just us, it's, that, is, that is the mantra of the business. If we can't get to you, like we say, we can only, uh, we can only service the central belt. 
I hope a lot of people adopt the same business model because if you can salvage it, if you can stop it for going to landfill, that has to be a win. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got in the office here where we are, uh, we just replaced a few windows with a treble glazing, um, but some of them, the, the, the supplier managed to save them. Yeah. You know, the opening mechanism and closing. So, yeah, not replace, but refurb, if you like. That's it. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent, Daryl. Well, thank you so much for uh, for it's been a pleasure having you uh, with us today at Business Spotlight and uh, for sharing your experience uh, with us today. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks, Javier. Appreciate it.